Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech, and we're going to compare Windows 8 to the new iPad. Windows 8 is in beta form or consumer preview form, and so it's not completely fair, but it gives you a good idea of what the comparison is since it's pretty well finished. Uh, Microsoft has come out and said it is what it is at this point, and they're going to do small tweaks and some finishing touches. So here we have the Dell Inspiron Duo. This is actually a netbook slash laptop that has a screen that flips around. And uh, I decided to use it since it's recommended by Microsoft for Windows 8 to get a good experience for it. It's an Atom 1.6 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM and a 320 gig hard drive. Here we have the new iPad, and this is the 32 gig Wi-Fi model. And it has a dual core A5X processor in it. We're not going to be doing any game tests in this review since this computer is really not built so much for that, but I thought we'd do a power on test. We'll take a look at the way it works and kind of do some in-depth comparisons. So let's go ahead and boot them both up. Turn on the iPad here. Now it's not really a race, but the uh, Windows 8 actually boots pretty fast, so you'll see it comes on, it's a Dell, and the screen on this is pretty poor, actually. It's got a really poor viewing angle. Uh, the screen is definitely better on the iPad, but that's just this laptop. The nice thing about Windows 8 is you'll be able to use all of your current apps for the most part, and everything else uh, that you might have for Windows 7, but then you get to use the new tiled interface, Metro Interface. So you can see it's still booting up here on the left. Depending on what you've got, it takes sometimes as little as 12 seconds. Here we have the screen is still booting, and there we go. Here's our lock screen, and here's our password or passcode screen. So if we go back here, we turn this on, and we can unlock. We get a password. Here we get some information on the home screen. Let me tilt this. You can see here a little bit better. And here we have a battery indicator, uh, and should we have email and things, it will show us across the bottom what we have, calendar, things like that. So let me go ahead and slide this up, and it's going to ask for my password. And this is my Windows Live ID. So I'll go ahead and put those in. Now I'm on the home screen of both devices. Those familiar with iPhone and iOS will see that there's the familiar app layout here. We can move things around. We can do the same on Windows 8. Very responsive, really nice, and it's a tiled interface. It's meant for uh, doing different things, and it opened up Internet Explorer. I didn't really do that there, uh, but it's meant for doing different things such as uh, your applications, anything you have open here. Everything on iOS is right here. So Microsoft is kind of doing the same thing, putting everything right in the forefront. But we have a lot of different options. Now with Windows, or I mean Windows 8, Windows 8 is pretty good overall, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how it works in the long run. So let's go ahead and look at some applications and how we move things around. Now should we want to move things around on iOS? Most people know we can tap and hold, X is to uninstall, move things around, they'll just kind of move out of the way. And Microsoft has sort of duplicated this. If I tap and hold, I can move things around move them out of the way. If I want to move this up here, I can do that. The mail and these tiles are all live. That's one of the advantages Windows 8 has, as opposed to just being stagnant tiles, as with the exception of the calendar app there, uh, we have live tiles. And what we have is mail here, it updates with real mail. Uh, depending on what we have here, we'll update with different things. So it's really pretty nice in that sense. Uh, it updates in real time and is really quite nice to use as far as that goes. We've got people, kind of like the People Hub on Windows Phone 7, weather, and they update in real time, and yes, it's 32 degrees here. It was nice and warm last week, but whatever reason, it dropped back down. So you can see we can move things around. Now, one of the things you need to know how to do is how you get back home or navigate around. And on Windows 8, we slide in from the side and we get what they call the charms bar. We have settings and share and search options. Over here, we just navigate around and we get back home by hitting the home button. So in that sense, they're both about the same. And actually over time, Windows 8 feels more natural in that you just slide in your hand there from either side up down. You'll get options by sliding in from the bottom. 
in top and sides, but without someone telling you that's what you need to do, you don't know how to do that or don't know to do that. So let's go ahead and open Internet Explorer. And how do we get to the address bar? Well, we slide up and we've got the address bar. Or we can get our different favorites here up on the top. It's a little bit confusing in that sense in that, you know, without a little bit of direction, you're not going to know what to do. And I'm hoping for the final build, they kind of give you a little bit of explanation how to do that. And we can split the keyboard as we can on iOS. If I want to split the keyboard, it splits over here. We can do the same thing. We can split the keyboard do by doing this, or we can do it with this little button here. Split. It's up to you. What, whatever you want to do, we can slide it around. Very similar on Windows. Now, keep in mind, this is the beta OS, but it is the full OS. If we go to Zolotech, I have it saved here. Zolotech loads, and it browses nicely. Let's go ahead and go over here to Zolotech so I can show you a good comparison of, of the browsers and how they work. There's Zolotech, so if we want to scroll, we can do that. Now, this accelerometer in this uh, Duo does not work that great. It's a little bit of a bug with some drivers. Hopefully it'll be fixed in the final build so we can rotate it around. That's why we have it in landscape in the iPad in portrait. We can slide just as easily, pinch to zoom, pinch to zoom, very responsive, very fast. And running on pretty slow hardware here, uh, but comparable to the iPad as far as, well, not dual core, but nice. So we can slide here, uh, we can tap, it opens, same thing. They're go both going to open. They're both on Wi-Fi. So here you can see there's my video. I can play it. Again, resize. Really nice. Now, if I want to go home on the iPad, we hit home. If I want to go home on Windows 8, slide in from the right, hit Windows, and we're back home. And that's really how you use everything. We do have the desktop on Windows, and we can access that by going here. Uh, and we've got the full desktop with all of our apps, and we can go back. Now, one of the things that Apple says the iPad does is multitasking. And multitasking, while it is multitasking in sort of a sense, it's kind of suspending apps and putting them down here where we can select them and go into them. Uh, it is not really multitasking. It's sort of suspending and putting them in the background. Where Windows 8 shines is we can bring in the last app. We can just slide it in, keep sliding in. Now, say I want to go home. And I want to slide in part of the web browser. Oh, we'll do that again. You can slide in the web browser. You can see here. And I've got to bring it up here. It's hard to see this angle, actually. So here we have different applications that are running. Let's go back home. You can see I can keep swapping. Well, I want to bring in the desktop. Slide, and it snaps in place. I can bring in the last thing here. Um, let's go uh, to another application, and I can show you that. So if I go to the music application, I can have the desktop there. I can slide it around. I can bring in this. I can resize everything. It will auto-resize. It's pretty nice. This, this multitasking is very nice on this tablet, and I'm really pleased with it. I think it's really a great way to do multitasking on a tablet. Now, this will work with a keyboard. Windows 8 was designed to be touch first, but be Windows still at the same time. And you can slide it around, uh, bring in things with the touch, but you can also use the mouse and things to drop them into the corners, like I showed in another video. Now, with that, there are quite a few applications for Windows right now. There's about 70-something uh, but there's a lot more to come, and 70 doesn't sound like a lot, but in a beta test stage, it's it's pretty good. And that's just 70 Metro apps, or 70, 75 Metro apps, which means they've got this interface on them. And you can see here's a bunch of different ones, and they're giving them out free for this version. We have Xbox integration and quite a few different things. One of the things that, that you'll notice throughout Windows is everything looks similar. They've got the Metro UI, and some people either love it or they hate it or they think it's cramped. Uh, and you can arrange that how you want. And here we have, we can blow out everything and show you all the apps. And uh, we can bring those back as well. But we can bring, we can go into, oh, let's say we'll go into Internet Explorer again. We can go back home. And at the same time as I'm watching a movie, I can bring that movie in. 
Uh, I'll give you an example. I was using the browser to watch a video on TheVerge.com, uh, a website. I like some of the reviews they do. And I slid that right into the side here. So I was browsing the internet. I slid that into the side. Here's the music hub. The video playback resized and everything. And I was able to use both at the same time. I thought that was really handy, really interesting the way they did that. And thought it was a great way to do that. I'd love to be able to do that on my iPad, but it just, you can't. And you can see some things are going to be a little bit buggy. They're working all the bugs out, but it's overall very smooth, very slick has a built-in email application like you'd expect with Windows. So let's go ahead and open that. There's email. And we'll resize it. And it's Metro UI. We can go to Windows Phone Insider. Same thing. I mean, everything is pretty much what you'd come to expect from Windows. Full version of Windows uh, on a tablet as well. So instead of going Apple's route where you have the Mac and you have a separate tablet, uh, Microsoft's decided to combine the two and get the best of both worlds. So in this place here, we can go to the desktop, and on the desktop I have Zune. We can double tap it, it will open, and we'll have the Zune player. So while that's loading, we can multitask to go back out. If we come back in, it will be loaded. So it's really nice, and then you can see these tiles are updating in real time. So I have a YouTube email. So there's a lot of different things we can show you, uh, but I just kind of want to give a, ge a general overview of, of way, the way things work and where Microsoft is heading in the sense of tablets. They kind of came up with tablets a long time ago. Uh, Bill Gates foresaw it as the future and unfortunately was too early on that and a little bit behind hardware-wise. There just wasn't the hardware to support what he was trying to foresee what might happen in the future. He tried to put a Windows version, Windows 95 style version on a tablet, and while it worked, it didn't work as well as something like the iPad. Because it didn't work as well as the iPad, it really didn't grab the, the larger consumer market as the iPad has and, and trickle into business uh, quite a bit as well. So we have some interesting things happening on Windows 8. Uh, a lot of different hardware you can choose. You can choose all sorts of hardware. You can choose any laptop you've got. In fact, Windows 8 has the same requirements as Windows 7. So anything you have will run it and probably run it faster and better. It's pretty surprising how fast it runs. And we have full settings and everything here. So we'll go into settings. And we'll go to, we have advanced. There's some basic settings. And we can go into settings like this, and then we have Windows updates, customizations, things like that. So unlike an iPad, you can customize everything on here, all the live tiles, all the way you want everything to look. So those that really like customization really get into that. Uh, no more jailbreaking with an iPad-like device. You can do that right on your tablet. So there's a lot more to compare, but that's just a general overview. I'll be comparing some more things more in depth in the future, uh, such as web browser, uh, different things when it comes to web browsers, cameras, applications, things like that. So we'll check those out in the future. Now, if you have any suggestions or anything you've been looking to try and find with Windows 8, if you're trying to decide what to do when Windows 8 comes out later this year, uh, I'll try and help you out as far as that goes. Just leave a comment below telling me what you'd like to see, and I'll try and record the video for you. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.